Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the GMC Sierra AT4X AEV Edition, the Ram TRX, and the Ford Raptor to see which automaker makes the best super truck. Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Kengar Ford here in American Fork, Utah, and to the National GMC here in American Fork, Utah for providing me with the trucks. National provided the AT4X, and then Kengar Ford provided the TRX and the Raptor. Link to both of their inventories in the description down below, and then on a side note, if you want to save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. So under the hood of the AT4X, we have a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 14 around town and then 17 on the highway with power outputs being 420 horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque. Now with the Raptor, we have a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6 that also goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Power outputs with this are 450 horsepower and then 510 pound feet of torque with fuel economy being 15 around town and then 18 on the highway. And then finally, we have the TRX, which has a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs with this 702 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque, fuel economy is 10 around town, 14 on the highway. Now, before we go over the front ends, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Starting with the AT4X, you can see it's very boxy with the overall design, especially like look at the hood there. And then we've got that very vertical front grille with GMC signature C-shaped lights. And then we've got this new bumper here from AEV. Look how aggressive like the recovery points are, for example. You can see it makes the approach angle quite a bit more aggressive as well. Now with this AEV edition, we've got about 11.2 inches of ground clearance with the GMC Sierra. Now popping over to the Raptor, you guys can see with the a little venting there in the center. And then notice with this also kind of has like kind of a boxier design. And then we'll call those uh, upside down L-shaped <laughs> lights, I suppose. And then you can see here with the Raptors front bumper, super aggressive. And then we've got the skid plate protection underneath. I forgot to mention the GMC also has skid plate protection, but I figured you thought that because off-road trucks. Anyways, we've got over 12 inches of ground clearance here with the Raptor because this has the 35 package. But yeah, pretty sweet design. And then finally finishing things off with the T-Rex, a little bit more rounded off with the design, but crazy venting there on the hood. And then look at like the front end here of this truck. Notice the Ram logo is hollow. Just like the other two, we've got like a bash plate here on the front end with some skid plate protection underneath. Now with the T-Rex, we've got about 11.8 inches of ground clearance. So right in between both the other trucks. And seeing them all next to each other, let me know which truck you like the best from a front end design perspective. Now, popping around the side here with the AT4X, we've got 33s wrapped around 18 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well. You guys can see these specialty wheels that do come with that AEV package. And then here's your full side view. Now, this is the only truck that's a standard body truck. It doesn't have a wide body like the other two, but it's still pretty dang aggressive with the fenders and, you know, pretty cool looking fender flares. Now, it's the AT4X badge, rock rails there on the side as well. Now with the Raptor, we've got 17 inch wheels, which is the smallest out of the bunch. Um, 35s though, so bigger tires. You can get 37s on the Raptor as well. And by the way, setup there in the back is identical to what you have here in the front. Now, since the Raptor is obviously in between the other two trucks, I can't really give you guys a perfect side view, but notice that we've got humongous fender flares front and rear, and then also big fenders as well, because the Raptor's got a wide body and it also has more travel. So the Sierra over there, I think has like 10 or 11 inches of travel roughly, whereas the Raptor here has 14 inches of travel in the front and then 15 inches of travel in the rear. So it's really set up for that high-speed off-roading. Now with the T-Rex, we've got 18 inch wheels, just like the GMC, but we've got 35s here in the front and in the rear. This is the only uh, tire and wheel setup you can get with the T-Rex in terms of sizing. And then just like the Raptor, you've got massive fenders, massive fender flares as well. But look at like the venting there on the side, pretty aggressive. And then this one's got like a two-tone paint job, which also kind of adds to the pizzazz of the truck. Now it's time for some shock talk, I guess is what we'll call it. So we've got the DSSV shocks from Multimatic here with the AT4X. It's a multi-chamber system and it basically allows this truck to be able to handle both low speed and high speed off-roading, but it's not an active system. And then something else to mention with the AT4X, it does utilize leaf springs. Now with the Raptor, we've got the Live Valve Fox shocks with this truck, so it is an active system. And we also have Multi-Link in the back end, no leaf springs. 
And then finally with the T-Rex, we've got the Black Hawk shocks from Bilstein, also an active system just like the Raptor. And then we also have multi-link in the back end like the Raptor, which actually Ford kind of copied RAM with that one, just saying. So we've got all of the keys right here. You guys can see functionality on all of them is completely identical, but notice Raptor, T-Rex, and then it just says GMC. Now with the AT4X, we have 1,006 pounds of payload capacity. And then this truck does have some cool bed features. You guys can see we've got the LED lights back here. We actually have a full power outlet as well. And then this one has the multi-pro multi tailgate. Apparently I can't say. It also has the kicker sound system built in. Now this Raptor also has spray and bed liner just like the GMC. Notice we've got like a measuring chart here on the back. Got some power outlet action here. And then you can see more LED bed light action. Now the cool thing with the Ford, we have the bed step um, and we also have an automatic raising tailgate. And then finally with the TRX, you guys can see we've got LED lights here on the bed, no outlets or anything. So this is probably the most basic bed out of the bunch. And you also have to pick this up by yourself, but you have to do it with the GMC too. Now, when it comes to rear styling, you guys can see again, it's kind of boxy here with the back of the GMC. You guys can see the bumpers again from AEV. And then notice with the exhaust tips, how they point downwards. It's supposed to help out with departure angle, having it that way. The Raptor on the other hand, as you guys can see, has pretty cool tail lights. Um, this one has the delete there on the tailgate, which I'm not a fan of, but it is what it is. And then notice the exhaust tips, pretty aggressive just for like a sporty look. And then popping over to the TRX, um, similar setup as what you have with the Raptor, especially with the exhaust tips on the truck. And then something I forgot to mention is all three of these trucks have full-size spares. They're just all um, underneath the truck. None of them are in the beds or anything like that. But anyways, out of the bunch, let me know which back end you like the most. And I know the T-Rex is going to be the brightest in this shot because of the lighting right now. But still, let me know which back end you think looks the best. Now, taking a quick look at the T-Rex interior, you guys can see really nice leather trim with the Alcantara here on the door panel. And then popping over to the seats, similar theme continues. We've got under seat storage here with the T-Rex. We've got ice buckets as well with the T-Rex. And we got this grab handle to help out with getting in, which it's needed because this truck's high. Anyways. You guys can see legroom's great. Um, this one has the reclining seats too, which is a pretty cool feature. We've got heated and cooled seats back here. We've got a full power outlet, some USBs as well. And then headroom's also great back here. Now taking a look at the Raptor, this one actually has the blue interior. You can get it's optional, um, but notice it's like black down there with the padding and then popping over to the seats. You guys can see you've got like the black mixed with the orange mixed with the blue. Definitely the sportiest looking out of the bunch. Under seat storage flat loading floor and we got a grab handle but this one also happens to have side steps which help out quite substantially i feel like the cab's just as big as the rams got a little storage pocket there heated seats in the back um, we've got some outlets as well and then headroom back here is also great and then finishing things up with the gmc you guys can see like the dark wood trim here and then look at the cross stitching lots of cool coloration happening here and then popping over to the seats i think these seats pop the most in terms of the look i think they look the best they also have this like behind the seat storage which is pretty cool and then under seat storage as well flat loading floor just like the other two we also have a grab handle which helps out because <laughs> with 33s this thing's actually pretty tall legroom it feels about the same um you guys can see if i heated seats just like the ford so the t-rex has the most uh, features in the back anyways headroom it's good now the T-Rex's front door panel is identical to the rear with the material use. This one has a Harman Kardon sound system, which I think is probably the best out of the bunch, but they're all pretty close. We got memory seats for the T-Rex, power folding mirrors, automatic windows for the front too. This has the trailer mirrors, which do flip up. They also have blind spot monitoring. And then here are the front seats, really nice leather trim, as you can see. The T-Rex also has these fancy looking pedals, pedal adjustment. You've got like your light control. Steering wheel is manually adjustable. And then we got a grab handle, which again, helps out quite substantially but we'll start her up. Look at that. Now, I do need to mention, oh, well, I'll mention it in a second. Um, first off, steering wheel on the T-Rex. You got leather trim all around. Um, Alcantara as well here at the top and at the bottom. Paddle shifters here on the back, which are pretty cool looking. Bunch of controls for center stack. This comes with stuff like adaptive cruise control, radio controls, by the way, on the back of the steering wheel. Now, for the 23 model year, the T-Rex does have a full digital gauge cluster. That is the only change um, for the truck everything else is going to be identical but this still has all the same drive modes so you have like a bunch of different modes for both on-road and off-road use here with the t-rex which is pretty cool with all the little animations that you get and by the way that drive mode select just right there t-rex is four-wheel drive all the time by the way you do have an axle lock with this this does come with launch control as well which is pretty dang brutal with 700 horsepower well, 702 to be exact now we do have a 360 camera system here at the t-rex on top of that 
So you've got a bunch of different viewpoints you can see out of with the truck, which helps out because this is a very big truck. It's definitely the biggest out of the bunch, not just in terms of like weight, but like the, the widest, that's for sure. Um, analog controls here on either side for like the climate with the infotainment system. Now in terms of usability, um, I think it's pretty dang good with this. It does take a second for some of the menus to pop up though. I mean, you guys can see with the response time. But I also do have heated and ventilated seats here for the front with the T-Rex. A bunch of auxiliary switches here for off-road stuff, off-road cruise control as well, trailer brake controls integrated from the factory. We got this cool shifter here in the center console, and then you guys can see the center console itself. Good storage space, by the way. Um, this doesn't slide backwards and forwards like the regular Ram though, so that is a little bit of a downside. That's the price you pay for a shifter right there. And then you guys can see T-Rex on the glove box here. And then really nice like leather trim all over the dash and everything, and then more Alcantara. And then this actually has a camera mirror, I don't know if that's gonna pop up on camera very well. And then power setting window. Uh, and then no sunroof on this one, but you can get a panoramic. Now the Raptor's front door panel, same as the rear. Notice just like the T-Rex, you got automatic windows, you got mirrors that power fold in, you got memory seats, you got blind spot monitoring. And then you can see here, you got like a speaker even in the headrest. Pretty cool looking seats though. That is for sure. And then we also have a grab handle, but we also have side steps, which make getting in quite easy, to be honest. Ooh. Um, so with the steering wheel, I think the Raptor steering wheel is probably the coolest out of the bunch. It's like really fat with the grips and you have really cool paddle shifters here on the back as well. And then look, you've got like adjustment for the steering, the shocks, the exhaust, all on the steering wheel. You can adjust it on the T-Rex as well, but it's through the drive modes and the custom mode and everything. It's not like individual buttons here. You also have an R mode, which is like your custom mode. Just like the T-Rex, you got adaptive cruise control. And then here's our full digital gauge cluster with the Raptor. We also have a bunch of different drive modes just like the T-Rex and apparently it likes to give me a low fuel warning. So pretty cool setup with that whole thing and the camera won't focus, but whatever. We've got a 360 camera system. Um, I'd say the view is better with this. I mean, look how much bigger it is on the screen compared to the T-Rex and it's full 360, just like the T-Rex as well. As for the rest of the infotainment system, um, it has a shortcut bar here at the bottom, just like the Ram. Uh, really good response time overall. We also have trail turn assist, by the way, with the Raptor, which is a pretty cool off-road feature. Um, so I'd say, you know, infotainment system equal over to the uh, Ram. We also have off-road cruise control with this, if you guys are wondering. Um, anyways, we've got our drive line select. So this is a normal truck, is what I'll call it, because it has two-wheel drive as well as four-wheel high, four-wheel auto, four-wheel low, locking differential in the rear. And then we do have heated seats, uh, heated steering wheel, air-conditioned seats as well with the Raptor. Also, trailer brake controls, forgot to mention that. And then we have a shifter here in the center console. It's kind of like a thing with these trucks. Uh, wireless phone charging pad in the front. And then this is actually the workbench, so it like pops forward. Also says Raptor here on the top, which is pretty cool. And you can see good storage space. And we've got like carbon fiber trim there in the glove box, which is fancy. Uh, but double glove box. And then not nearly as nice with the stuff here on the dash. Just a regular mirror. Um, auxiliary switches are up top here at the Raptor is kind of interesting uh, and then we do have a power setting window and then panoramic sunroof now taking a look at the front door panel here with the at4x you guys can see just like the rear with the overall design front two windows are automatic mirrors power fold in we got memory seats we got blind spot monitoring and then here are the seats we've got lots of uh, similarities with the trucks love that says at4x i do like the look of these seats uh, a lot i think they look great they also have massage function which is pretty cool the other two don't have that and then we've got like all of our drive modes select controls here tow haul mode um your drive line so again just like the raptor it has two wheel drive as well as four wheel high and four wheel auto four wheel low light controls this one has a heads up display steering wheel is power adjustable and we got a grab handle to help out with getting in Anyway, just closing this up and starting her up. Pretty fancy. Um, so this one has the most normal steering wheel. This is just like out of every other Sierra. Um, but we do have paddle shifters here on the back, which is pretty cool. Radio controls on the back as well. Heat steering wheel button on the steering wheel. Um, adaptive cruise control, just like the other two. And then we've got a full digital gauge cluster. Um, again, just like what you get in a 23 TRX or that Raptor. And then we have less drive modes, um, but I mean, you just have what you need, right? You've got your normal, you've got your off-road, and then you've got your terrain, which is like your low-speed crawling, and then you have a tow haul mode as well. So they keep things a little bit more simplistic here with the GMC. And then popping it into reverse, really good camera system, just like the Ford. So I think the Ford and this one are pretty close, but I do like the, the wheel shots on this one. I think that kind of elevates this camera system to number one. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, um, it's pretty, again, similar to the Ford's, how it's horizontally opposed, shortcut bar there, and good response time. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I do like the engine stop start button on this one the most. It's the most high quality feeling. 
And then you guys can see we've got heated and cooled seats, dual zone climate, and then we've got a bunch of features down here. The important stuff for today's video, we got hill descent control, right? And then we also have a rear locking differential as well as a front locking differential that you have to have both of them locked at the same time. Um, so the other two don't have front locking differentials. So that's a big difference. Although the Raptor has a Torsen front differential and then the Ram T-Rex does braking stuff with the front to kind of mimic a front locker. Anyways, look where the shifter is. Who would have thought? Uh, we got trailer brake controls behind some cup holders and then center console here with wireless phone charging pad and then double glove box just like the other two which is pretty snazzy um really nice material use here on the dash in terms of the look and everything camera mirror just like the t-rex and then we have a power sunning rear window and then we've got a sunroof and then this one has a nice premium headliner the other two just have like normal cloth headliners so when it comes to pricing the AT4X in this format, stickers for $90,000. Now, if you get a loaded up 35 package Raptor, you're gonna be about $85,000. If you get a 37 package loaded up, you're gonna be about $90,000. So these two, theoretically could be about the same price. And then with the T-Rex, this one's a little bit of an outlier in this comparison. You can get a T-Rex for under $90,000, but that's not gonna have a lot of options. If you load it up with the options that most people add to the truck, you're gonna be looking at, you know, close to $100,000, potentially over $100,000 if you like really, really load it up and there's the pricing. That's gonna sum things up for our walk around comparison. I want you guys to let me know which truck you like the best after this walk around comparison. Now I will be posting a driving comparison as well in the near future. So that's another reason to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, my thoughts after this walk around comparison, I think the GMC has the coolest looking interior from a design perspective. I think the Ram has the nicest material use. You can tell that the materials there are just a little bit uh, nicer, more leather, all that kind of stuff. The Ford's interior is the sportiest looking, but obviously the materials aren't like the most luxury based, if that makes sense. And then when it comes to exterior styling, I mean, that's going to come down to personal preference. I actually frankly think that like, we're in a situation where all three of these trucks look really, really good. So I think that's a big plus. Uh, but regardless, let me know which truck you would pick and I will see you guys in the driving comparison.